There we go. Yes, I bound doctors. You know, it's an interesting thought, Mike. When you said that, I'm like, wow, how many times is that really what's got to happen? <clears throat> and maybe what we got to do is not necessarily bind the doctors, but bind their education to stop them from just letting the body tell them what to do. Many times people treat in the medical profession, they treat the monitor and the machine, what it's saying, rather than actually looking at the body saying, what is going on? Does that make sense? It made sense to me. <laughs> Disclaimer, not that doctors are bad. <laughs> Doctors are not bad, all right? It's like, thank God for doctors. I, we, we, in no way are we saying that. When you get in a situation like this one with um, Donnie Jr. and some of these other situations, people begin to overthink it rather than just saying, God Almighty, get involved and make something happen. And that's what's got to happen is we just say, God Almighty, get involved and make something happen and Give us an answer, no matter what human people say. Um, speaking in the name of Jesus, wake up and walk, and doctors are inject, injecting medically induced sedation. Right. Right. There you go. That's exactly what we're talking about. And listen, if you don't understand it, don't worry about it. Just say, oh, that's just Pastor and Sam. They're just talking, or Mike and... <laughs> Because it makes perfect sense to us. In the mighty name of Jesus. What happened? Speaking in the name of Jesus, wake up and walk. And doctors are injecting, injecting medically induced sedation. Yeah. Pulling out of the hospital and we'll heal them ourselves. Now... How about the tigers or something? <laughs> Get to something just a little lighter here. Well, this is real life because people's lives are hanging in the balance. And um, it is a very serious battle when somebody's getting ready to lose their dad, their mom, their sister, their brother, or whatever. And we've got to see everybody and the whole process work together. And... When you get one thinking they got more control, unless it's God. And um, man, that just, that makes a mess. We can't have that. So matter of fact, let's just do it right now. We declare over every person on this prayer list that we're praying over, we declare the wisdom of God fills the medical staff in that hospital, wherever they are. Everybody say, give them great wisdom. Give them great wisdom. Amen. 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 And we declare that life happens in their body to all their cells, all their tissues, all their organs. Everybody say it. Function together properly now. We speak it over Travis. We speak it over Barb. We speak it over, um, let's see, who's next? Erica. Erica. We speak it over Matt and Teresa Dowd. And Teresa the Thorsby Dowd. family. Um, the, uh, it wasn't there another one there? The, here we go. Ruben, El Tolina, Barb, Ben and Darlene. Susan, the Baker family. And um, Ron and Chris, Rich, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we speak the same thing over Sherry Gilbert and Michelle and Chris Timmer, who are all recovering from surgery. We call it done right now in the name of Jesus. Healing and restoration in your bodies, 
in every way that you need it and the revelation that God is on the inside healing you from the inside out. The same spirit, everybody say it, that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of me and them. And that same spirit produces life in our mortal bodies right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Anybody listening right now, you can reach out and receive the same level of healing that we're talking about right now in your body. If you need it, say this with me. Eyes see. I see. Ears hear. Ears hear. Amen. Speak to your body. All of my organs function properly in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in Jesus' name, we speak over Travis and over um, Sherry and Michelle and DJ and Nate and Chris Timmer. In the mighty name of Jesus. We speak to that flesh that it heals from the incision. We speak to whatever they dealt with on the inside. Be made whole. If they put steel in, be healed and may the steel be laying on the bed beside you. When you wake up in the morning. To be healed in your spirit, in your soul, and in your body. In the mighty name of Jesus. I'm going to tell the story again <clears throat> right now because it's a good one. There was a man in Africa who uh, something happened in his life and he had to have a prosthesis put in for his elbow joint. This one right here. All right. And it was a piece of steel and connected to the bone, and they stuck it in, and he began to have use of his elbow again. Got crushed or something, I forget it. A construction accident or something. Anyways, put that in, and, and it worked, but he didn't quite have the same mobility that he, would, that he had with his, with his normal elbow, which is usually the case. So he started praying. He started speaking to it. To be made whole, which is what our our word is going to be tonight. And he, he was in a big conference and somebody looked at him, prophesied and said, all your bones or something, you know, whatever the prophecy was, healed. And he woke up the next morning and there was that joint laying on the pillow beside him. And he had a dream that the angel came that night and did an operation and gave him a new bone. He had that dream. And when he woke up, the joint was laying there on the stand, I guess, maybe the stand or the bed right beside him. And literally, you can go to the Internet and you can see a picture of it. Now, you might say, well, Pastor, that's something on the Internet, except that Dr. Winston's the man that told the story I heard. And Dr. Winston is the bishop over the guy's pastor. So it's not just a story somebody tells on the internet. This is one of those stories that's real. And God literally took that out, literally took it out and gave him a brand new um, uh, joint. Now, another man of God went to heaven. God took him to heaven, gave him a revelation. Walked him by this big warehouse. He said, what's in there? He said, spare parts. He said, what's that mean? He said, in there is all the parts that you need for your life to have a perfect, healthy body. Isn't that an interesting concept? It is an interesting concept. Say this with me. God has me healed. God has me here. All the way to eternity. All the way to eternity. 
And then I have a new body. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Another lady had um, appendicitis. Went into the doctor. He took her appendix out. She was in a meeting. And um, somebody said, you can go to heaven with all your parts. She's like, well, I want my appendicitis, my appendix back. She goes, I don't know why God put it there, but it's supposed to be there. And I want it. And I'm going to heaven with all my parts. <laughs> For some reason, she went back to the doctor and had another scan. And the doctor walked in the room just to cussing the surgeon. He's like, I know I took that out of you. And she goes, I know, doc. He said, um, I know this thing says it's in you. She said, I know, doc. Let me tell you the story. And she told him, and he just kept the cussing. <laughs> Why? Because they don't like it when God out trumps them. But guess what? God's going to get you every single time. If you think you're God, there just comes a point as a medical professional, you got to say, all right, creator, make it work. Because God can make it work way beyond anything you or I have ever seen. And, um, you know, the, another one of those great stories, I guess I'm going to tell a few healing stories here. A man was in the great miracle uh, meetings there in uh, Brownsville, Texas, or Brownsville, uh, Florida. And uh, he was a part of that great revival. And one night that somebody was preaching and they began to prophesy that people's teeth were being healed. Mary said she needs a new ear. Well, just start speaking it, Mary. I have a new ear. I have a new eardrum. You want to say it? All my ear parts are perfect. Put your hands on it. All my ear parts are perfect. I have perfect hearing. I have perfect. This guy, uh, he's at church. They pray, they prophesied that. He'd been praying that God gave him a whole new mouth of teeth. And uh, it wasn't, it was a little while later. He he went to the dentist on his regular appointment, and the dentist Starts examining me. He's like, where, where have you been? He goes, what do you mean, where have I been? He said, well, somebody else has been filling your teeth besides me. He goes, no, they haven't. He said, yeah, there's. I, I don't use that gold, and I don't do work that looks like that. I've never seen a filling as perfect as what that is. He said, well, what are you talking about, Doc? He said, you've been to another dentist. He said, oh, no, I've not been to another dentist. He goes, let me tell you a story about the revival I was in. The guy said, let me take a sample of that gold. I've never seen it. So he scratched it, took a sample of it. And when he got back with him, he said, there's no, no, no dentist use this gold anywhere. He goes, well, doc, I told you that that filling came from heaven. And he's like, well, it would have had to come from heaven because nobody's got that gold on earth. And God filled his teeth with gold from heaven. Hallelujah. Which do you want? Brand new teeth or your teeth filled with the gold from heaven? You might say, Pastor, these stories aren't even making sense. Well, I know that that might be your statement, but here's how they make sense. It happened to somebody. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell you another one. <clears throat> Somebody type this in, or a couple of you type it, type this in. R.W. Shambach on Donahue. Wasn't that a... Donahue, he, Phil Donahue, Phil right? Donahue, yeah. yeah. R.W. Shambach was on Phil Donahue's program. All right? R.W. Shambach, they called him, Phil Donahue Show. Of course, you can tell how long ago that was, the, the Phil Donahue Show. Called him and said, Mr. Shambach, we would like to refute the miracles you have. And he said, well, um, I'm not interested in you refuting because what I do is of God, and if you refute it, then God will just judge you. 
You can probably see it on YouTube somewhere. And he said, I'll come to your program, but I get to have all the studio audience. I get to pick them. That's what Shambach said. Well, they wouldn't do it at first. And finally, they just really wanted him on there. So he picked 300 of the most miraculous miracles that had happened in his tent meetings. There you go. Thank you, Shannon. That's cool. There you go. There you go. I think you spell Shambach with a B A C H. It's S C H. S. All right. Sister Leanne's got it. But thank you guys for putting it in there because I guarantee you'll catch it. Anyways, 300 people in the audience, the studio audience, who have all been healed at an R.W. Shambach meeting. So it doesn't matter who Donna who talks to, the person has received a miracle. And they brought a guy there who had no eye, who had no eyeball in his socket, but he could see. It's one of the most unique miracles on the Shambox ministry. They, they totally taped the guy's eye completely shut, the good one, so that he could not see out of that eye. And then they handed him a newspaper and he read out of the eye that had no eyeball in the socket. Wow. Pastor, what are you telling me? I'm telling you, God does amazing miracles just because you haven't seen it or I haven't seen it doesn't mean that they don't come to pass on this earth. Can I get an amen from anybody? And does anybody remember the last time we showed that video of R.W. Shambach and we played it? Did they did they shut us off when we played that video of the 26 miracles? Don't remember? Brother Mike, do you remember that? If they shut us off when we played that video of the 26 miracles in the little boy's body? Brother Dan, one of you guys that's been around a long time. Amen, amen, and absolutely. Amen, Rebecca. What's this about, Pastor? Well, obviously tonight God's wanting us to talk about miracles because here we are right in the middle of it talking about it, and it's the flow. So. Well, we might as well just go there. What's it going to hurt? We can all come back if they decide to stop it. Everybody pause for a minute. Brought me from the airport. He said, Brother Shambach, what's the greatest miracle you ever saw? I said, do you got? Everybody just pause for a minute because. Uh, this is just one of those stories. And then we get done, we're going to hear another one. From tent revivals in America's urban centers to major venue. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple. All right. I'm going to set it up. We're going to let it play. This is Brother R.W. Shambach. If you've never heard him, this is one of the greatest revivalists. One of the greatest tent meeting men of our day. Um, and... Um, you probably can't count the number of miracles. There wouldn't you'd have a big old book because of the miracles this man's seen. But he's gonna tell the story right now about 26 miracles and one little one little baby. Oh my goodness. This is an amazing story. Get ready to shout, jump, dance, run, get your coffee. You're gonna want to hear this. 
Here we go. He's in Acts chapter 4, and they're talking about Peter and John going into the temple. Ask for alms. Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. He didn't know what he was going to receive, but I, I, I underlined the word he expected. He was expecting to receive something. And Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. I give thee, or give I thee, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him, him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Immediately. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. It broke up a prayer meeting. <laughs> I'd like to see some more prayer meetings broken up. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew that it was he which set for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. I would like to suggest in your devotional time, read the first five, six chapters of this, and you will see how miracles played a very important part in the establishment of the church. In the third, in the fourth chapter, let me just read a little from this. Verse number 13. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, I believe we need a revival of boldness. Amen. I'd like to see God's people get bold Amen. and not be ashamed of what they believe. Amen. And let people know that it's for today. Just like it was 2,000 years ago. When they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. What a testimony. And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves saying, what shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle which hath been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. He's doing it again. He's doing it again. But that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether? It be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God. Ye judge, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen, which we have seen and we have heard. And we have heard. Amen. Bow your hearts and let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the reading of the Holy Scriptures. In the name of Jesus. The anointing of God is already here. You can sense it when you walk into this auditorium. And that anointing destroys every yoke. 
People are here from all over. Many of them are here for a miracle. Physically. Some spiritually. Some in their family relationship. Some in their mind. Some need to be delivered from demon forces. And they've come. Not only to hear the word, but they've come to see God perform a miracle in their life. Lord, I've been praying that this be the night. Don't allow one soul to leave this place disappointed. Let them leave here tonight singing a new song. Yes. I got just what I wanted from the Lord. Everybody said amen. Amen. And and amen. Amen. And amen. Many of you, I'm not going to go into the whole thing, but many of you have heard me tell the story, especially on TBN, of the greatest miracle that I ever witnessed was in A.A. Allen's meeting. A lot of people, when I tell that, they come to me as church folks. They said, Did that really happen? I said, uh, no, I'm just telling a lie. Yeah. Sinners will believe what you say, but it's church folks that don't believe it. Help us, Jesus. Where be all your miracles? When we were in Birmingham, Alabama, I'll never forget it. I'll just paraphrase it. A mother from Knoxville, Tennessee, came to Birmingham, Alabama with her little son, four years of age, that was born with 26 major diseases. Wow. He was born blind and deaf and dumb, and his tongue hanged out of his mouth. Wow. Lay on his chin. He had deformed Lungs, deformed liver, deformed heart, only two and a half chambers were functioning in the heart. Wow. He had no business to be alive. And she told me, she said, Brother Shambach, I preached the afternoon service. We called that the faith clinic to get him ready for the operating table tonight. Many of you need an operation tonight. And I've been praying about this. Let me go on just a little bit more about the story. But she came to me and in my spirit, I said, if God kept this boy alive four years, then he must be going to do something for him. Because the doctors told her that that boy would never see his first birthday. And he's approaching four. Both arms were deformed, matted together, elbows protruding up into the stomach, both legs deformed, the knees touching the elbows. He was in a fetal position. Expecting that child to die any moment. He was born without male organs. And he was born without feet. Twenty-six major diseases. Wow. That woman stayed for a week, like some of you are going to do here. Don't go home early. (laughs) You don't know what's coming. That woman stayed for a week. She lived in a motel, ate three restaurant meals. She gave in every service. We had three services a day. And she came to me the following Sunday after I got done preaching. And she said, is the man of God going to pray for my son? I said, I don't know. Because God used him in a supernatural way where he sees things. And he'd always take you on a trip. Halfway through his message, he was stopping. He said, "Uh, God... Is taking me on a trip. And I I told her, I said, now, I don't know whether he's going to pray, but I'll tell you this one thing. If he does not pray. Now, she told me, she said, I 
I ain't got but twenty dollars left. Fifteen dollars is for the doctor. Five dollars is for gas to get me from Birmingham back to Knoxville. And you know that must have been years ago when gas was only fifteen cents a gallon. Yeah. Some of you young folks, you, you can't conceive that. But that's when it was cheap. And she said, all I have left is $20. And you ain't going to see no doctor for $15. And she said, i got to take him back. Do you believe he's going to pray? And I said, I don't know. But I will tell you this one thing. If he does not pray for your child tonight, I will personally take that baby to the man of God's trailer house. We all lived in trailers. And I'll get him to lay hands on that boy before you go home. She said, you'll do that? I said, I'll do it. She went back to her seat. Got in the service that night. I introduced the man of God. He come flying out there. And he said, I believe God's going to do great things tonight. He said, but before we do this, I'm going to take an offering. Doesn't that sound familiar? I hope you all obeyed God tonight when Pastor Parsley asked you to do something. Because that's what triggers many a miracle. It did in this case. And she said, all I have left is $20. He came out and he said, I believe God's going to do great things tonight. But he said, before I preach, I want you to give God an offering of faith. And I never heard him use that terminology before this. And he said, now, if you don't know what I mean, an offering of faith is giving God something you can't afford. If you can afford it, there's no faith connected to it. And I saw that little woman throw that little baby into the arms of another woman, and he leaped. She leaped out into the aisle and came running. He was holding the offering buckets. We were in the fairgrounds auditorium there. I'll never forget this. And she came running down there and threw an offering into the bucket. She was three quarters of the way back and she was the first one to the bucket. I leaped off the platform and yep. I went down and looked in the bucket. Yep. Yep. Because I'm I nosy. Yeah. <laughs> I know what the woman had. Because she told me that afternoon. And when I looked in that bucket, I saw a $20 bill. I ran behind the platform and I wept like a baby. And I cried out to God and I said, oh, God. I've been trying to teach faith to this woman all week. And I said, please, Jesus, give me faith. Yep. Yep. Like I saw that woman yep. manifest tonight. Yep, yep, yep. I don't know whether I could have done that. You don't know whether you could do it unless you're in a similar situation. I jumped back on the platform and he started to preach. He was into his message about 10 minutes and he said, I'm being carried away in the spirit. I said, oh, no. Hallelujah. Here we go on another trip. <laughs> and all I have on my mind is that baby boy. And he says, I'm coming up on a white building. Oh, I know it. It's a hospital. I'm on the inside now, and I hear a lot of babies crying. It's the maternity ward. He said a little baby was just born. And there's four or five doctors around the table. And I hear one of the doctors saying the baby won't live to see its first birthday. He said the baby was born with, this is Brother Allen talking. The baby was born with 12, 16, 20, 26 major diseases. And I come alive. I said, my God, tonight's that baby's night. Amen. 
He said the doctors are wrong. The boy's alive. And he said, I see the mother getting into an old Ford, packing a suitcase, another lady with her. And he said, I see the Tennessee Alabama border. He said, that old Ford's pulling into the parking lot. He said, lady, you're here tonight. Bring me your baby now. God is going to give you 26 miracles. Woo! Glory. Nobody told me this story. I was there. I was an eyewitness to it. And she came and put that baby in his arms. Mama was standing over there at the end of the platform. He paced back and forth. He said, I want everybody to stand. Close your eyes. I'm standing with him, pacing with him. I said, I ain't closing my eyes. Amen. I said, I've been waiting for this all week. I'm going to be scriptural. I'm going to watch and pray. Amen. Darlene Bishop, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? I'm going to watch and pray. And I watched. And the first thing I saw those blind eyes, a milky color, whirlpools began to spin around. And all of a sudden, the whirlpool was gone. And I was looking into the eyes of a brown eyed baby boy. The blind eyes opened. I knew if God opened the eyes, I knew them deaf ears pop. And all of a sudden, the next thing, the arms started cracking and popping like cordwood and both arms came out both legs simultaneously with the arms began to snap Woo! and brought both of those legs out remember the boy was born without feet and born without male organs but here all of a sudden and i saw this with my own eyes god created feet on the little boy that had no feet. Come on. What do you want God to do for you? Do you I've been want? hearing that ever since I got here. What do you want? Not what you need, what you want. What do you want? What do you want? Uh, anything he wants to give me. I'm tired of that mess. What do you want? Jesus on the main line? Tell him what you want. I said, tell him what you want. Hallelujah. You're going to leave here. Oh, you're going to leave here a different person tonight. This is your night to receive a miracle from God. Hallelujah. A little while ago, you told somebody, I believe you're going to get a miracle. Turn around to that same person and say, uh -uh. I'm the one going to get the miracle tonight. That's what I'm here for. I'm believing God for myself. I'm going to claim this for myself. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Woo! I cannot deny God's power. Brother Allen put that boy down on his brand new feet. No shoes. You don't put shoes on clubs. He had no shoes. Barefoot. Never saw his mama. Come on. Never talked. The tongue snapped back into his mouth Come for on. the first time. Come on. And he started taking off and running to mama. And I'm running right on his trail. And he leaped into his mama's arms, and I heard him say his first words, Dwight. said, Mama! Oh, I'm telling you something, folks. That was the greatest night that I believe I was in because that precipitated other miracles. 
12 wheelchairs on that side. Come on. 12 wheelchairs. And when you see wheelchairs, a lot of them are motorcycle accident victims. Broken backs and hips. No hope. On that side were 15 stretchers they brought in from the hospital. All of a sudden, when they saw that miracle of that little boy, Woo! everybody in the wheelchairs, nobody laid hands on them. But all of them got up like a master sergeant commanded them to rise up. And they come out of the wheelchairs totally healed by the power of the living Christ. Woo! Every eye left the wheelchairs and every eye went to the stretchers. Anticipation set in. God never disappointed them. Nobody laid hands on them. No human hands. And everybody in those stretchers got up and walked out. Totally healed by the power of the Ah, A notable miracle has taken place. One of the greatest, I believe, that I've ever seen. And it was precipitated by a $20 offering. That's all she had. You can't buy a miracle for twenty dollars. Can't buy a miracle for twenty dollars. Man of God said, "Give God an offering of faith." I hope you all did what God told you to do. When this man of God talked about them phone calls, because when you give, you precipitate an offering. I mean, you participate, precipitate a miracle. That's coming your way, especially if you're obedient to God. Now that woman wrote me a letter. This will top it off. She went to Knoxville and she said, I'd have walked home just to get a new baby. Oh, I'd have walked home. But she said, I didn't have to walk, Brother Shamrock. She sent me the letter. She said, but you and that preacher left early that night. And I'm standing there, and he, she said, a little woman came and shook my hand. She was so happy for what God did for me. And she said there was a folded piece of paper between the palms. And she said she left it in my palm. And she said, I'm so glad for you. And she looked in her palm, and there was a $20 bill. Come on! And other people began to line Come on. up. And everybody that shook her hand had the same sensation between the palms. And they come by so fast. She said, I just opened my purse, Brother Shambach, and said, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. <laughs> what do you want? She said, Brother Shamrock, I went in the ladies' room and counted all that money. She said, I counted it. She told me what it was. And she said, isn't it just like Jesus? She said, I ate in three restaurants every day. Gave in three offerings every day. Paid the hotel bill. She said, God sent me home with more money than what I came with. And I'll never forget her P.S. P.S. Brother Shambach. You can't beat God. You can't beat God given. No matter how much you try. I stole that from her. Perky. I made a book out of it. You just can't beat God given. No matter how much you try. So you taking another offering. Uh, maybe some of you missed the first one. <laughs> and you didn't obey God And you may have to come down here And turn it loose I ain't taking no offering But I, I come here to preach I didn't get started yet Last year I got cheated out of 
Well, I'm going to make up for it tonight. <laughs> All right. Well, now that's the end of that video portion that he's got right there. And if you're a really good internet sleuth, you might be able to actually find the video of A.A. Allen live. I don't know. I've never been able to find it, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. How do you like that? True, bona fide, documentable video of God moving mightily, 26 miracles in one kid. And I think the best part of, well, it's not the best part of it, but it's like God saying, here's some whipped cream and a cherry on the top of it all. Yeah. How about I send you home with more money than what you took off with? <laughs> Why? Because you moved in faith and you said, I'm not going to stop in, at any point of this. I'm just going to keep right on going in, God. And, baby and the, the baby's totally, completely healed. You know, the only problem we face, guys, is that Christendom has kept these stories hidden and said they're too radical. Well, what's more radical than what Jesus did? Jesus was serious radical. He would heal on purpose on the Sabbath right in the face of the people that were going to say, you can't do that. And he'd say, he'd just wink at him. You know, he would. He'd wink at him and say, watch this. And then he'd say, your sins be forgiven you and be made whole. It's like Sister Gwen said, I want to be in those services. Oh, yeah. Amen. I'll tell you what I want. I want to see every one of you be those people. Amen. That you just, you and I, I, I really am continually asking God that this just be commonplace for every one of us because we've come to a good understanding of who God is on the inside of us. And you and I see him. You and I see the miracles. You and I see a, a person that's deformed, person that's got some disease process in the grocery store. And we just walk by him and the shadow heals him. Yeah, amen. amen. Why? Amen. Not because of you, not because of me, because we got so much Jesus on the inside of us that every time we walk by somebody that needs it, they automatically connect to the Jesus on the inside. And that Jesus radically sets that person free in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. You know, Dr. All Roberts said, you guys haven't seen nothing yet compared to what it is that's going to happen in the last days, which is where we are right now. He said the miracles he saw in his tent would be nothing compared to what you and I would see in our day. Now, if you think about what we just saw, that ain't nothing. Wait till you see what is something that's in the day that you and I live and we're planning a tent meeting. Very popular de denomination discredited a miracle. Said the doctors got it wrong and misdiagnosed because no one can be re recovered from being brain dead. Well, wait, wait. No one except Jesus. He was totally dead. Well, well, wait. And and so was Lazarus. Well, okay, 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 wait, wait, wait. And so was um, the little girl, Jairus. Yeah, well, but that's all. Well, no, actually, in the Old Testament, the lady that built the room, her son was totally dead. But that's all. That's all. No more. Well, except maybe there was Dorcas. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Dorcas. But that's all. There's no more. That's just, that's all there is in the body. And the, well, wait, there's that one more person that Jesus raised who was just walk, no names, just walking down the street with a casket. He walked up and said, come on, get up out of there. Peter's mother-in-law. Yeah, that's another one. Wait, wait. Acts or Matthew chapter 10, the disciples went out. Jesus told them, heal the sick, cleanse the leopard, raise the dead. The disciples raised the dead. 
Wait, we didn't finish reading Mike's statement. Exactly what part of miracle does Christianity and religiosity not understand? Well, it's like the one guy said, they got some really highly paid educated fails, huh. educated fools that um, are teaching these people to believe this. They're highly educated by the spirit of religion. We don't judge them for it. They're believing it. They're bound. We ain't going to believe it because we actually read what, what's in the Bible. Now, you might as well just go with me because we're going to read it anyways. Because this is where God's got us tonight. Go with me to Mark chapter 11. And we're going to go to verse number 20. Somebody shout, I love the word. I love the word. Now, if you go if you go search that on YouTube, you can actually see um, Brother Shambach tell the story himself. That's that's easy to find, 26 miracles. Uh, the part that I never was able to find was the actual service where it happened with A.A. Allen. But, of course, that was a long time ago, so there may not have been a camera in the tent with him. Who knows? Dr. O. Roberts had a camera. And... Um, Think, think about this. Dr. Roberts said greater things than he ever saw is going to happen to you and me. He himself personally in one service, all his own hand laid hands on 10,000 people in one service. And they were made whole. Why? Because it's like he just said. As soon as one miracle happens, the miracles break out all over the place. I don't remember if it was A.A. A. Allen. Um, Might have been Amy Simple McPherson. Could have been Oral Roberts. Might have been John G. Lake. One of them, there was literally 350 um, stretchers in this building, they had gone and emptied every hospital. There was no one left in any of the local hospitals. Brought them in the tent, in the building, wherever it was. Absolutely every one of them went home totally healed that night. Now wait, that's not Jesus. That's not Paul and Peter. That happened in the 1900s right here in the good old United States of America. And, and Dr. Roberts said, if you think I saw something, wait till you guys see what happens in your day. Say it with me. Jesus, help us help people. Jesus, help us help people. That's why every one of these sessions we do right now, from now to the tent meeting, is so important. Because every one of us are growing in faith, growing in wisdom, growing in knowledge, growing in favor, and getting every bit of faith wrapped up inside of our life, getting ourselves free in every single way, so that when we walk in that tent, the power of God can flow, and we are totally free to let it happen. Amen. Can I get an amen, amen. from anybody? Hallelujah. Point at the person across the room and say, even you. Even you. Even you. Wait, point right at your screen and say, and pastor, even you. And pastor, even you. Oh, that's right, Mary. Oh, that's right. Very much right. It's not whether or not you're at the tent meeting. It's just that's coming. And um, everybody that's there is going to get it. And everybody that has any faith can get it. Ready? Here we go. Let's read this. Did anybody know where we're going? Mark chapter 11, verse 20. In the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up that Jesus from the roots. Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. You want to say it? The cancer we have has cursed has withered away. Ready? Say it with me. The COVID we cursed 
has withered away. Amen. 22. Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. One translation said, have the faith of God. Another translation says, have the God kind of faith. What is it? I say to you, whosoever says to that mountain, be removed and cast in the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes those things he says will be done, he will have whatsoever he says. What did that little lady say? I'm getting a miracle. My son's getting a miracle. This week we're getting a miracle. Evidently she took somebody with her from her hometown and what'd she tell them? We're getting a miracle. I don't know what about anybody else, but I'm going up there to Knoxville and getting me a miracle. God's going to perform a miracle for my son. What was she doing? She was saying with her mouth what she saw in her heart, and it was coming to pass. R.W. said, if he don't pray for you tonight, I'll come get you, and I'll take him to the tent. God said, I better do this one tonight because that boy's going to take him back in the tent, and this has happened one way or another, and I want everybody to see this one. Watch this. 24, therefore I say to you, whatsoever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. What do you do, Pastor? You speak it like it's already done. You'll hear it in our prayers right here. I declare life in every cell every tissue, every joint, the very marrow of your bones and all of your organs, life to you right now in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Sister Shannon, I know you got Chris's um, messenger. Can you find that video on YouTube and send that to Chris? Chris Timmer. I don't know if I've ever sent it to him. Let me say that differently. Right now, I am being directed by God to do that. And if you can help that happen, sister, I appreciate that. Or brother Mike, which is one of you guys got that. Here we go. Whatsoever things you say are going to come to pass. Look what Mary just said. Mary just said, I believe miracles can happen if we can't get to a revival meeting. Amen. I agree, Mary. Your ears are healed. Your eyes are healed. And everything about you is healed. Filled with strength. I saw a young boy, maybe 10 years old. He was born deaf. Prayed over and he began to cry because he could suddenly hear. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. It's real. It's real. It's real. Here we go. 25 and 26. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, Thank you, Shannon. Forgive him that your father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your father forgive yours. So what's the number one hindering factor to any miracle happen in any of our lives? Unforgiveness. Get it out. Like Brother Mike said tonight even if it's unforgiveness of yourself. Say it with me. I forgive everybody, I forgive everybody of, everything, of everything, no matter what. No matter what. Why? Because you can't afford to have anything hindered in your life. Deal with your marriage. There ain't no sense 
of having any miracle stop in your marriage. It don't matter. If you ain't right on the inside, admit it. And just say, it. well, I'm, not, I'm the one that ain't right and I got to get it fixed. Why? Because it's the answer for being fixed. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you. God gives grace to the humble. Say to the mountain, be removed. Let's keep looking. We are going now to Mark chapter 5, verses 21 through 34. Mark 5, 21 through 34. Do you know there's no record of unanswered prayer in the Bible about Jesus? There's no story of anyone going away unhealed that wanted to be healed. Woo! Mark 5, 21. Watch this. Now, when Jesus had crossed over again, wait, let's set it up. Let's set it up. You got the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus goes to the other side. The wave comes. The, the, the storm comes. Tries to stop him because he's going over where the demon-possessed man is. He gets to the other side. He casts the devil out of the man. He comes back over to this side. All right? And... He's been across the lake twice and preached the Sermon on the Mount. And now he's back over here and we're at verse 21. Not too bad for one day's work, is it? Just think if you was one of them disciples having rowed across that lake twice in one day, seven to nine miles, depending on where they took off and where they landed. <laughs> Don't judge Peter, James, John, and the 12 because the boys were tough. Can I get an amen from anybody? Here we go, 21. Now, when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. One of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Will you come and lay hands on her that she may be healed and she will live? Well, this is the ruler of the synagogue, Jairus. The synagogue is right next door to Jesus' house. You might say, how do you know Jesus has a house? Because it says it in a whole bunch of places right here in the New Testament. Matter of fact, when they tore the roof off the house so the man could be healed, that was Jesus' house. You can, you can hear the cogs turning. <laughs> she put a little oil in there so that the gears stay nice and lubricated. Let's keep reading. 24, Jesus went with him. Look at this. And a great multitude followed him and thronged him. There's a difference between follow and throng. Have you ever noticed those two words are in there? Mm -hmm. Follow is everybody's just right in line there. Jesus in the lead. Throng is they're coming around him on every side. Why? Because he had so much of the power of God on his life. They knew if they could just touch him, that they would be made whole. Watch this. 25. A certain woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things 
from many physicians. Have you ever known anybody like that? Yeah. Messed up deal right there. She had spent all she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. Have you ever known anybody in that position? I have. I hate those positions like that. It ain't God. Say it with me. That ain't God. That ain't God, that ain't God at all. Nope. 27. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. Now, she's part of the throng. She's bleeding profusely. 28. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched me? I want you to get this picture. Jesus did not know the lady was there and that the lady was going to touch him. But he did know when the virtue flowed through him. Now watch. 32. He looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him all the story. Say it. She told him all the story. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Now, that lady did exactly what we were teaching last night. She said, and she kept saying, Go with me to Luke chapter 8. I think that's where it's at. Luke chapter 8. No, it's not it. It's the Matthew verse. Let's grab Matthew chapter 9. One of these actually makes a statement. There it is. It's, it's Matthew 9, 18 through 21. And we're going to go right to 21. Matthew 9, 18 through 21. And we're going to go right to verse 21. Watch this. For she said in herself, If only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. Tonight's subject, tonight's topic is speak to the mountain. What was it the lady said in her heart? If I can just touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. Say that with me. I am touching Jesus. I am made whole. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, our whole, our whole topic last night, the whole subject last night, everything we were studying last night is Jesus said, why do you take a thought saying? And he was talking about worrying. But this woman continually said in her heart, if I may touch, 
but the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. Now, here's the cool thing about it. She was made whole exactly as she said. What do you want from Jesus? Are you saying it? All of a sudden, it gets pretty simple, doesn't it? All of a sudden, it gets real simple. Bottom line is, are you going to speak to the mountain and tell it what to do? You think about that story of that lady that's there getting her baby healed. What did she say? I'm going to Knoxville, and I am getting my healing for my son today. Why? Because Jesus said, when whatever you say to that mountain, be removed and cast into that sea, it is going to be removed and cast into the sea. And what's going to happen? What, whatever it is you're asking God for, you're going to receive it. And it might not be a healing in your body. It might be your children walking with God. Stay with me. I have the promise of my children. Of my children. To 1,000 generations. To 1,000 generations. Isn't that an awesome statement? That's an amazing statement. Because, I i mean, I put it right up there on my, on my picture. To 1,000 generations of my family. Every time I look at that picture, it's written right on the picture. To 1,000 generations. And I see my children and my grandchildren. And I speak it again. I have the promise of my children to 1,000 generations. What are you doing? You're speaking to that mountain. The mountain has to be removed. It has to be cast into the sea because you're operating in the faith process, which is what? You're going to speak to the mountain, and 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 you're going to speak to the mountain. Now. Amen, Rebecca. Everybody just bless Rebecca for a minute. Rebecca, you have the promise of your children to 1,000 generations. Bless Mike and Shannon now. Mike and Shannon, you have the promise of your children to 1,000 generations. Let's bless Dan and Gwen. Dan and Gwen. You have the promise of your children to 1,000 generations. Let's bless Mary Pastorick. Mary Pastorick, you have the promise of your children to 1,000 generations. Who's next? Um, Wilma. Everybody say it. Wilma, you have the promise of your children to 1,000 generations, which now that includes Mike and Shannon. You know what's cool about it? Mike and Shannon have the promise of their children to 1,000 generations. So you know what that means for Wilma? She's got the promise of the children to 1,001 generations. Have you noticed that if all of us have that promise of our children to 1,000 generations, that it's never going to stop? Say it with me. It's never going to stop. Here we go. Evelyn Robinson. Say it with me. Evelyn Robinson, you have the promise of your children to a thousand generations. Thank you, Shannon. Sister Shannon wrote it in. Everybody say it. We bless you, Sam and Leanne, of your children to 1,000 generations in the mighty name of Jesus. I think Velma was here too, wasn't she? Velma, you have the promise of your children to 1,000 generations in your life. Yes, there she was. I saw her way back. Oh, Phyllis K. Raymond. Phyllis K. Raymond, you have the promise of your children to 1,000 generations. Dave and Gwen, you have the promise of your children to 1,000 
generations. Somebody say it with me. It is done. It is done. It is done in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Can I get a big amen out of anybody? Amen. 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 Now, Pastor, why'd you just do that? If you're with us tonight and we can't see you, say something. Because we bless you too. Jesus said to the disciples, if you will say to that mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, it must obey you. Look at what this woman said here in, um, in the story. Yeah, there you go. Check mark. It is done, Rebecca. I love it. Amen. And amen and amen. Now, think about this fact. It's not just done because we said it. It's done because it's a promise in God's word. You and I grab a hold of that promise from God's word. And then we speak it like it's already done. We speak it like it's already done. And um, God's hand of blessing brings it to pass, even in the strangest situations you've ever seen. It just brings it to pass. Why? Because your faith in this word is what moves the mountain every single time of your life in Jesus' mighty name. Now, let's read the rest of the story because... It's not just the woman with the issue of blood. I am now back in Luke chapter 8, and let's read um, from verse four, verse 50 to verse 56. Luke 8, 50 to 56. Everybody pause for a minute. I'm going to get a drink of warm coffee because I got a coffee warmer now, Mary. Isn't that something? The coffee just doesn't get cold. How cool of a hallelujah is that? Verse 50. When Jesus heard it, he answered him saying. Actually, I guess we should have read 49. While he was still speaking, someone came from the ruler of the synagogue's house saying to him, your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the teacher. But when she heard it, he answered him saying, but when Jesus heard it, he answered Jairus saying, do not be afraid, only believe and she will be made well. What was Jesus doing for Jairus? He was canceling out the fear on the spot immediately so that Jairus could stay in faith. Jairus had seen Jesus perform miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. If you're believing God for a miracle, then then go, go watch some of Monty on um, YouTube. There's a lot of stories of miracles on there. Just make it make sure it's from a reputable ministry because there's some of them that's going to give a microphone to a demon. That, that, that ain't God. Don't do that. Nobody needs to tell you what your name is or what your address is or what you had for lunch. That's all a familiar spirit. There's none of that that, that is in God. But the, but the reputable men, reputable men. Now, that's amazing. Miracle. Matter of fact, we're going to get this little girl healed, but let me remind you of another one from Brother Copeland. Matter of fact, I think we were streaming that night that that happened in that miracle where the lady came and played the piano. Weren't we streaming that night? Mm -hmm. I think we were. Yeah. So they were having a healing meeting 
at Eagle Mountain. Was that in 2000? It was 2019, wasn't it? Or 20. I don't know. Anyways, it just happened. They're having a healing meeting at Eagle Mountain in Texas. People are being healed right in the sanctuary. And all of a sudden, there's a lady there, and she's in a wheelchair. You can see it with your own eyes. And uh, the, the, the man, his name is Billy Brim, went over there to her, said, what's going on? Listen to this story. She says, I was home watching this miracle meeting at my house on the Internet because I'm so debilitated. And all of a sudden, I begin to feel God healing my body. And I said to my husband, we've got to get up and get to that building right now. And I think it's like a half an hour drive for him, something like that, wasn't it? It was something like that. So they get in, check this out. They get in their car and drive to the building. And he said, well, what's going on? She goes, I'm vibrating. I'm vibrating. I can feel it. It's happening. And I forget. You remember what she had? Maybe it was MS or something. I don't remember what it was. Anyway, she was debilitated. She was in a wheelchair. And he goes, well, let's stand up. She stands up and she begins to move and she begins to take steps. And then she begins to take more steps. Next thing you know, she's running back and forth. I mean, run for where she'd been. And she stops. And he said, what's the deal? She goes, I'm a concert pianist. Playing the piano. And I don't remember. When you watch the video, it'll tell you how many years it had been since she'd been able to play the piano. Because her fingers, her, her, her fingers and joints had become stiff. He said, are you healed? She, she's like, yeah. She goes up there. And begins to play the worship song that they're singing during that healing meeting. And she begins to do it. You can see the miracle right in front of your eyes for this lady that was at home. Got in the car and drove to the meeting because of modern day technology like you and I have right here right now. Somebody shout hallelujah. Glory be to God for miracles. Amen. 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 I hope you are as fired up as I am right now about the things of God. We're going to see these same miracles continually happen right here while we're right here. And then anywhere where God has us go and have a meeting, whether it's in a tent, in a building, who knows, on the side of a road, in the shopping center, God's going to perform a miracle. Now let's go back to Jesus. We're going to get this, this baby healed. Amen, Mary. Say it again or something. But we don't want to have a tent meeting without you. So we'll send. No, you're going to be healed in your body so you can do it yourself. In the name of Jesus. Here we go. Luke 8, verse 50. When Jesus heard him say, don't trouble the master, she is dead. Jesus said, do not be afraid, only believe. I want you to prophesy that right now. Do not be afraid, only believe. Just got the repost from Matt and Kelly are 100% healed from COVID and the baby never got it. Hallelujah. Come on, Hallelujah. Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Thank you, Shannon. 
Thank you, Shannon. Come on, Jesus. Everybody say it. And the baby never got it. And the, baby. and the baby's not going to get it. Amen. And everybody else around them are free from that because of the presence of almighty God in Jesus mighty name. Hey, amen, Rebecca. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Come on, Chris Timmer, sign, sign in and say, I'm up running through the halls at the, at the VA center. <laughs> amen. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, my mom's here. Everybody say good evening to my mom. Hi, mom. It's good to have you with us tonight, mom. We're talking about miracles. There's a miracle. My mom, well, I ain't going to say that. That wasn't going to be a very nice thing to say about myself. So I didn't say it. <laughs> Here we go. We are in Luke chapter 8, verse 51. I like this part. Learn this part. When he came into the house, he permitted no one to go in except Peter, James, and John. And the father and mother of the girl. You want to shout it? Glory to God. I can see what's going to happen. No more COVID. <laughs> all the, and now all wept and mourned for her. But he said, do not weep. She is not dead, but sleeping. I'm watching on YouTube, but can only comment on Facebook. Now, what you guys got to hear by that statement is my mom is operating two apps at the same time. And I think that's pretty good. She is. She's an amazing techie. I think that's pretty good. Watch this. 53. They ridiculed him. They ridiculed Jesus of Nazareth. Who were the ridiculers? The people who were just as soon have the baby dead. They didn't. It, it, well, she lived good. If she died, well, I guess she died. I don't know about you. Well, I do know about you because you're part of this group of people. And we like life here. I don't like anybody not making it. I want every story to be just like Shannon put in there about Matt and Kelly and the baby didn't get it and they are completely COVID free. Say it with me. 100% COVID free. 100% COVID free. And the baby didn't get it. And the baby didn't get it. Wait, wait. I speak that over Audrey Van Gessel. I speak that over the Baker family. Oh, okay. You got one? We need to pray for Christine. Christine? Perfect. All right. We speak it over Susie and Ben and Darlene. We speak it over Ron and Chris right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And the babies don't get it in the mighty Amen. name of Jesus. We speak it over. That was Matt and Kelly Thorsby. All right. We speak it over Donnie Jr. We speak it over Barb. There you go. We speak it over Barb and everyone around her. Nobody gets this bug in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. We speak over Christine Barkley and everyone that has that same situation. In the name of Jesus, life and life more abundantly in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Look at look at Christine Barkley. She's asking us to pray over the IRS. Father, 
In Jesus' name, we rebuke the IRS. <laughs> I just, that was just a good time to rebuke the IRS because anyways. Several uterine fibroids and ovarian cysts. She just got the results. All right. Um, fibroid tumors and cyst. In the mighty name of Jesus. Dissolve now in Jesus. Be removed from Christine's body. Get off now. And we declare in the name of Jesus perfect health in every organ system of her body. From the top of her head to the bottom of her feet. Every organ system functioning together properly according to the word of God. Whenever you pray this, guys, pray for the marrow of the bone because that's part of the resistance system, right? Right? All right. We speak to the marrow of the bone. Resist. And create the resistance to all of this. And we speak life and life more abundantly to your whole system, Christine. And anyone else that's with us that's in the same situation, life and life more abundantly to your body right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't always. Well, all righty then. Thank you, Wilma. Update on Barb. Doesn't have COVID. Pneumonia. Well, I rebuke you, pneumonia. We speak life in this body. Right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. We speak life. To all of this family, and all of their friends, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we speak life. In the mighty name of Jesus. And for everyone that has real faith, pray for the IRS. <laughs> Barbara Weckward, we declare over you so much peace in your body that life is everywhere around you. Thank you, Father, that it's not COVID. And now, pneumonia, you dry up, you get out immediately now in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus. You know, I have to say something here, guys. Um, sometimes you'll hear me like that come back and pray a little bit more. <laughs> because when we speak these things, I just speak it done. I just speak it done. I believe when we say it, I believe it's done. One puts a thousand to flight. There's over 15 of us on here tonight. Who knows? There could have been 25, 30 different people on here tonight. I believe and I declare it's done. And sometimes I'm like, wait, did I pray for that enough? And so every now and then you'll hear me come back and it might seem like, Wait, did Pastor forget enough something? Uh, no, I just came back to say, wait, did I hit it all like I needed to? Because um, I truly want to see people healed. Here we go. We're going back to Luke chapter 8, and we're in verse 53. This little girl is going to get raised from the dead. Here we go. 
And they ridiculed him, knowing that she was dead. But he put them all outside, took her by the hand, and called, saying, Little girl, arise. 55. Then her spirit returned, and she arose immediately. Look at what it says. Then her spirit returned. And she arose immediately, and he commanded that she be given something to eat. And her parents were astonished, but he charged them to tell no one what had happened, but keep it between them and the family in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, I want you to notice that in verse 55. That's a very key factor of this miracle. Her spirit returned to her. Uh, the next time you're praying for somebody and um, you want to see that same thing happen, you and you think, wow, they, they may not be here. One of the things to say is I command their spirit to return to them and fulfill the assignment that God has for them on this earth. Can I get an amen from anybody? Hmm. Amen, amen, amen. Now, uh, let's see. Huh. Well, somebody help me find the verse that says the years of a man's life, and then it gives the time span of 120 years. Amen, John. How do you keep secret when your little girl comes alive? Don't know. But um, what Jesus was warning that family about is all them morning mockers, people outside, don't go out there and put it in a bunch of them people's face. They're a bunch of mockers and, and criers and mourners and all the rest of that. Genesis 6, 3. Genesis 6, 3? Really? thought it was Deuteronomy. It's all right. Gen Genesis 6, 3. Here we go. There it is. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not strive with man forever. For he is indeed flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. Amen. Genesis 6, 20. Or six three, I right. and and there you go. How are you going to keep it quiet? Oh, you're not going to keep it quiet. It's like the story of uh, Smith Wigglesworth when he was in Africa, and one of the men that was a part of his church died, and um, he got word, and he said, "Well, don't let him bury him. I'll be back as quick as I can get there." I don't remember how quick it was he got back. But they said he walked straight into the, into the funeral home, grabbed the guy out of the casket, threw him up against the wall, said, prophesy, because I can't have you in heaven yet. Your work's not done on this earth. The man fell down, grabbed him again, stuck him up on the wall and said, prophesy. <laughs> you, you, you might not do this next week, but he did. The third time when he put him up on the wall, the man's spirit came back to him and the man served alongside Smith Wigglesworth the rest of his life. Why? Like Smith said, your job's not done. That was an accident. You're not supposed to be gone. Let's have you finish your work. You can see the miracle of the man coming to life in the... Um, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, Reinhard Bonke meeting. Uh, the man from Africa came back to life right in the meeting. You can see it right on the right on YouTube. You can watch it happen. You might say, Pastor, no, Reinhard Bonke didn't play games. 
There ain't nothing fake about Reinhard Bonnke. Reinhard Bonnke was one of the most serious warriors of God that there has ever been on the face of this earth. Well, I don't remember. You remember what it was? 79 million people were born again under his ministry. It was something like that. 79 million, I think is what it was. That he had, he had personally documented proof that 79 million different people had been born again through his ministry. Pastor, why haven't I ever heard of these stories like this before? Because the spirit of religion does not want this to get out. Like, like uh, Shannon just said, and uh, John, uh, you ain't going to keep it secret. It's going to go everywhere. How many of you are like me? You want to see a whole hospital full of COVID people just get up and walk out totally healed? Can we get an amen from anybody out there? I want to see it. That's why every time we drive by this hospital over here, I, I say it and say it and say it. I speak life and life more abundantly to everyone that is in that hospital so that their lives change. And it, and it happens right here, right now, immediately in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus probably had more business elsewhere and had to beat feet. <laughs> well, that could be. And when you look at it, um, it doesn't say how many days it was before they he sent the 12 out. But, hey, he sent the 12 out and gave them authority. Well, let's just read that. Chapter 9. We might as well just keep reading this while we're studying Say it with me. I speak to the mountain, I speak to, the mountain to, be removed to be removed and cast into the sea. And cast into the sea. And it has to obey. Yeah. Watch this. John, Luke chapter 9. Watch. He called his 12 disciples together. Gave them power and an authority over all demons and to cut and to cure diseases. Remember, Luke is an actual doctor, a medical doctor. Luke is not one of the 12. He's a medical doctor that traveled with Jesus. Luke chapter one, nine, verse two. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God. And to heal the sick. And he said to them, take nothing for your journey, neither staff, nor bag, nor bread, nor money. And do not have two tunics apiece. Whatever house you enter there, stay there. And from there depart. And whoever will not receive you when you go out of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet as a testimony against them. So they departed and went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Look at verse 6. These are disciples, not Jesus. He gave them power over all the power of the devil and to cure or heal diseases. These are not, this is not Jesus. These are disciples that are not born again. They're not filled with the Holy Spirit. Their sins have not been remitted and uh they're not walking in jesus righteousness yet because jesus hasn't died and offered his righteousness to the father these are men deputized in jesus name and they went out and got it done now watch this let's go to um chapter 10 verse number one Watch this one. I love it. Holy Spirit, have your way here tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Father, anybody that's with us tonight that needs a miracle, may they speak it out loud, and we will declare it in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Luke chapter 10, verse 1. And after these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also. So the 12 have gone out and come back. Now he's sending out 70. And he sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. And he said to them, the harvest is truly great. The laborers are few. Pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. They're the laborers. They're going into the harvest. Now, let's go to um, read it. All right, we'll read it. Verse. We're going to read down through 12. Go your way. I send you out as, as lambs among wolves. You know the cool thing about these lambs? They had more power than the wolves. That's a big amen, isn't it? The lambs have more power than the wolves. Amen. Four, carry neither money bag nor sandal. Greet no one along the road. Whatever house you enter, first say peace to you. If a son of peace is there, that means someone who knows God. Your peace will rest on it. If not, your peace will return to you. It's one of the most important factors you'll ever learn about the kingdom of God is to send your peace out and learn to, and learn to judge it. Now, just because somebody's having a bad day don't mean that they're, you're going to have bad peace. Amen? Why are you saying that, Pastor? Well, some people will say, well, yeah, you looked at me the wrong way. There's no peace in that. Yeah, you can't go there. Peace is the force of God from the inside that says, I bear witness with that brother, that sister, that we are of the same spirit and let's dwell together in unity and watch God get a big thing done. Verse, verse six, um, seven, actually. Remain in the house eating and drinking such thing as they give you for the laborer is worthy of his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. Look at verse 9. Heal the sick there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. That's our assignment right now. Whoever comes to us, and needs healing. The cool thing about what we do here. Is the people that come here. And ask us to pray. Truly need healing. And they come here on purpose to receive it. Therefore. We're not standing amongst a bunch of people. Saying. Well do you want it or don't you. People that come here. Come here on purpose. And they come here for the point of being healed. And what an amazing story we have right here tonight that uh, um, Barb did not have COVID. Thank you, Lord. People have been dealing with pneumonia for years just in the natural. COVID's rebuked, so is pneumonia. But now Matt and Kelly don't have it anymore, and the baby didn't get it. That's a powerful miracle, guys. There's a miracle in Christine finding out what's going on. Yeah. Why? Be and she's healed. She because healed. just finding out helps you realize I'm not, there's not anything, no matter what it is that's wrong, I'm not losing my mind. There's actually something that is wrong. And now those are dealt with and healing is in her body. Say it with me. Speak to the mountain. Matter of fact, let's just do it. Mountain be removed. Be from my life, from my life, and get over there and into, the sea. Cast into the sea. Matter of fact, everybody cast your mountain in the sea and focus the water toward North Dakota. Amen. Throw it in the North Sea up here, Chesapeake, or I mean, um, Thunder Bay, and it'll splash down here. 
Don't don't worry about it. It's not a real big spiritual issue right there, but what are you showing us, Pastor? God gave disciples who were not born again, who were not filled with the Holy Spirit, who did not have the righteousness of God to walk in, who did not have the word of God to read and believe. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, Lord. God gave them power, delegated authority. They went and functioned in it. Bam. Look at verse 17. The 70, this is um, uh, Luke 10, 17. The 70 returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning out of heaven. And I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. So he's not just talking about bugs. He's talking about demons. Over all the power of the enemy. All of the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice that the demons are subject to you, but rejoice because your name's written in the Lamb's book of life. Now watch this. Not only that, but rejoice that you get to function in the power of the Holy Spirit residing on the inside of you. Rejoice in that. Shout it. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit of God. And God Almighty lives on the inside of me. Everywhere I go, I get to spread that same Holy Spirit power and life and life more abundantly begins to flow and happen on a daily basis every day. You know, last night, let's move to that now. Let's talk about that. Last night, we gave you, uh, I, I copied and pasted in here, and I'm going to just talk about it again. I copied and pasted in here a document of verses that are verses you can begin to speak that produces faith on the inside of you. Now, Pastor, I don't know how to use this necessarily. Well, here's how you use it. You find a way to capture what it is I'm putting on here. Just a minute. I'll, I'll do it again. Thank you, Wilma. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Sister Leanne. Thank you, all your friends on um, YouTube. I'm not sure who you are, but um, we welcome you to be with us here tonight. We're thankful that you're here. Let me see if anybody gave me a shout out in Messenger. Susie did. Bless you, Susie. God bless you, man. All right. So did I put that in there? Yeah, I put it in there. Uh, you can see it. Um, you can copy it down. What do you do with it, Pastor? You begin to speak it regularly all day. Do you remember what those verses were that we... We're speaking that one time. We spoke them 10 times a day for 30 days. That was Dr. Winston, wasn't it? That gave that assignment. If Dr. Winston was preaching it in one of his messages. And he said, I want you to take these verses and speak them 10 times a day for 30 days and see what happens in your life. Well, wow, goodness sakes alive. To speak any verses 10 times a day for 30 days, um, wow, that was a real task. Julian and Bamala, 
sending greetings to all of you. Much love and hugs to all of you from us. Well, hallelujah to Julian and Vamala, all the way from Malaysia. So guess what? We send you guys much love and hugs. Everybody give a big hug. We love you guys. Thanks for being a part of us. What a deal. I declare before Jesus comes that we get to see Julian and Bamala face to face. Brother Tanvir face to face. Sister Lena face to face. Our friends in Australia face to face. And we done got our work cut out of us already just by saying what I've just now said. <laughs> I speak the exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think, so I don't have a problem with saying it. Did you don't you can't seem to get it? This is what this is what Leanne and I have learned to do: title everything, date everything, and put some catchwords in everything you save. Every time, so when you start searching, you can find it. Okay, 10 times a day for 30 days. Psalm 115, 14. Mark 10, 29, and 30. That's what it was. Yeah, All right, hold on just a second. I'm getting this saved. And I'm going to put it over here where I can see it. There's all my <laughs> now, you might say, Pastor, did you guys actually do it? Yeah, we actually did. And um, But here's what we learned in order to get it done. We had to set our alarm And just do it. And it took us about what? Eight minutes? Seven minutes? Well, I don't know. Because we added our own verses onto it, too, as we went. So it grew. Man, I'll tell you what, guys. We want to visit you guys. Serious about it. Brother Brother Tanbeer, Julian and Bamala, we, we truly want to visit you. Um. On the hill over here in North Dakota. Come on, John Wayner. Prophesy, dude. Prophesy, John Wayner. John's seen it. Now I changed that over here where I can see it, and I can't see it, but I'm going to quit worrying about it right now. Here we go. Let's go to this confession that I put in there. Let's all read this together right now, and then we'll be done. It's the one that says Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1. It's about keeping your faith tank full. Ready? We're going to read it. Uh, somebody pin it. Or is it further up? There it is. It's pinned. Everybody say this confession with me. This is what we call a confession. We read the verses about it. This is exactly what the woman with the issue of blood kept saying. Not these words. But in her heart, she kept saying the same thing over and over. What was she doing? She was building faith. We learned last night, Jesus said, why do you take a thought saying it? By worrying. 
Well, worry and faith is the same, same action. One's negative and one's positive. One is going to damage you because that's fear. And the other one's going to build you because it's faith. Ready? Say it with me. Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus. Since the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in me, he who raised Christ from the dead also gives life to my mortal body through his spirit who dwells in me. Pause for a minute. When you talk about filling your faith tank, just the fact that that verse right there, that the spirit of God lives on the inside of you, that in itself is going to build your faith tank. Because all of a sudden, when that revelation really hits, you're like, Hold it. The spirit of God lives in me. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. We're in Matthew 8, 27. So the disciples marveled saying, who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? Acts 4, 29. How, now, Lord, Look on your enemy's threats and grant to me, your servant, that with all boldness, I may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Acts 10, 35 and 38. But in every nation, whoever works righteousness, I do, and lives in the awesome respect of the Lord, is accepted by him. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth and me with the Holy Spirit and with power, who go about doing good and healing all who are oppressed of the devil, for God was with him and is with me. Do you see how I just take the verse Take it out of third person or second person and put it into first person. So all of a sudden, the Bible's actually speaking to you. It's not you speaking it to someone else. And we are now in Matthew 13, 11. He answered and said to Samuel, put your name in there. He answered and said to Samuel, because it has been given to Samuel to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. For whoever has, to him more will be given. And he will have an abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has, will be taken away from him. Now, when I write that for myself, I just take that last phrase out because... I choose to have. And when I'm making a statement, a declaration of my faith, I'm not going to say the parts that are about not having because I don't have my faith on that. Yes, we can, Shannon. Hold on. Just give me just a second. Matter of fact, can you just keep reading? I'm going to send that to Shannon right now. Then he said to them, take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured back to you, well, to me. And to me, who hears, more will be given. But blessed are my eyes, for they see, and my ears, for they hear. But I am he who receives seed on, on the, the good ground. ground. Is he <laughs> I am he 
who hears the word and understands it. I indeed, I indeed bear fruit that produces some a hundredfold, some 60 and some 30. And as you can see, like we saw last night, I didn't get that verse done. And um, I didn't get it done today. But when we turn this off tonight, I'm getting them verses done. And, and you can go right in and fix it yourself. And then I encourage you. What do I do, Pastor? Do I just read this out loud? Mm -hmm. Yep. And as soon as you put it in first person, it's going to begin to make sense. But it's it's one of those things that you got to do in order to get this book, the Bible, to truly come alive to you is you got to make it personal. You literally got to take these verses and make them verses, make the verses for you. Make it personal. In the mighty name of Jesus. Here we go. Mark chapter 4, verse 26. And he said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter skeet. Sc Just like that. For all of you satyr skeeters. <laughs> Let's try it again. Kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by day. And the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. How, how do you and I explain how the word of God gets down inside and begins to grow? I don't know. Watch what it says. 28, for the earth yields crops by itself. First the blade, then the head, and then the full grain in the head. But when the grain ripens, immediately he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. You're speaking this about yourself and your soil. Say it, I'm good soil. I am good soil. Say it. I got all the rocks out. I got all the thorns out. I got the wayside tilled up. And I'm good ground. In Jesus' mighty name. Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. Your kingdom come in my life. Your will be done. In my life, on earth, as it is in heaven. Pause for a minute. I'll never forget the day when I had a Catholic man say to me, you mean we should actually pray that as a prayer? I'm like, wait, what did you just say? He said, the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father. We're actually supposed to pray that as a prayer. I said, um, hmm. what did you think we were supposed to do with it? He said, well, I just thought it was what we had to use however many times when we went to confession. I said, look, let's read it. So I, uh, we opened up the Bible and we read it. And, and it said, and Jesus said, he goes, wow. Wow. He said, I'm going to pray that as a prayer from now on. See, that's the difference between saying it often and quoting it for no value at all. Our Father, but I have not helped you. I came to come and I will be done. I have not helped you. Amen. 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 What did you do? You were given 10 Our Fathers. And as soon as you got it done, you were now absolved or whatever. Forgiven. No. I guarantee you, when you talk to the Father, 
about sin in your life, there'll be a little bit more conversation that's going to go both ways. <laughs> What's that mean, Pastor? If you got sin, Father's going to talk to you about it. Get the sin fixed. And then he's going to expect you to say something about it. And then he's going to talk and you're going to talk and he's going to talk because that's how it is. And it's going to be a lot more than him hearing you say, what is it, five verses? That's not what he wants. Jesus actually said, you draw near to me with your with your lips, but your heart isn't with me. And he said, I don't like that. We are in Matthew 9 and 35. You ready? Then Jesus went about the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing every sickness, every disease among the people. And then Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word. Heeding the voice of his word. Yes. Oh, I thought you got a revelation. I just realized where you were at. I was trying <laughs> to find my spot. And then... <clears throat> now, the whole point of tonight was speak to the mountain and speak. Like it's already done. When Jesus looked at that fig tree. He said no man is going to eat fruit of you ever again. When you and I speak to COVID or any other disease. You and I speak to it like it will never survive another second. And say it with that much tenacity. Say it with that much fire. Say that with all the power you got on the inside of you. Look, it's what Brother Mike said earlier, and it's what it's what the disciples said right there, that with all boldness and bolder still, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. That's very good. Sadder Skeeters. <laughs> I like that. I like sad skeeters because that means they can't bite. We got some real skeeters up here now. Yeah, I know. It's always that competition. Who's got the biggest skeeters? Just so you know, Alaska. Them boys, they breed them things with eagles, man. They'll carry you away. They don't, they, they take you back to their hive and eat you later. Whew. Like the one guy said, when that dude sticks his nose in you, you feel like a drilling rig set up. <laughs> All right. Well, we sure had us a night tonight, didn't we? What a night. We just started right out talking about healing, and we never stopped from right at the beginning till right now. And guess what that means? We all have a better understanding of healing. We all see a bigger picture. Thank God for Brother R.W. Shambach telling that story so we can hear it. I encourage you to go look it up and see it. Seriously, look that look that miracle up on Brother Copeland's network on the Victory Channel. Um, hey, love you too, Mike. His favor is upon us and his blessing is on us. We got a friend like Mike. Thank you, brother. Love you, man. Watch this. Wait, let's pray and we'll receive our communion elements so I don't just keep going because I'll just keep going. <laughs> North Dakota skeeters drill right through your head, into your head. That's because every man out here wears a hard hat. They got to get serious to get some blood out here, man. Let's pray. 
Father, in the name of Jesus. Far beyond our ability to see with these human eyes. We see with our spirit. We see with the word. And we connect our spirit with the Holy Spirit on the inside of us from our relationship with you, Father, that we get to be one with you, just like Jesus. Thank you for your word tonight. Lord, help every one of us here not only hear the testimonies of the miracles, help us experience them in our own daily lives. Help us experience them. Bring across our path the opportunities to stand in faith in your word and see people's lives changed just like we do every day right now. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I speak mountain moving faith over every one of these who are with us tonight. I declare they have the promise of their children to a thousand generations. We declare right now tonight the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and adds no sorrow with it. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus. You might say, Pastor, I've never seen these kind of miracles happen. Well, Here's what I encourage you to do. I encourage you to take on this list of people that we pray for every day. And I encourage you to, to, to grow and develop in your faith by speaking what you hear us speak. Um, because as you hear us speak it, then you speak it, and the next thing you know, when somebody's standing in front of you, when you speak it, uh, you'll see it work in your life. Watch this. It's Hebrews 6.12. Do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience Inherit the promises. What are you doing? You're using our example of faith and patience, and you're inheriting the promises. Uh, Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, verse 9. The things which you learned and received and heard and seen in me do and the god of peace will be with you don't do them don't do it because i do it what you see me do check it in the word which is going to be right while we're doing it and then you do it look what paul said verse 9 the things which you learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Why? Because you're going to watch it happen right here in front of your eyes. Next thing you know, it's going to be happening in your house. People will be saying to people, where's that house where you went where them people prayed for you? And then they'll come over. They will. Some people might call you a radical. I'd just soon be called a radical and be able to see people healed from disease and sickness and sin 
than to be known as a religious nun and not be able to get anybody free of anything. In the mighty name of Jesus. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23. You guys thought I was going to keep right on preaching, didn't you? I even got the 92nd lady turned down, John. It's it's safe tonight. Yeah. Freak you out, buddy. For, verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took the bread. When he had given thanks, he blessed it, he broke it, and he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. As often as... As you drink this, do it in remembrance of me, Jesus. For as often as you eat this bread, and as often as you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's redemptive work until he comes. Verse 28, let a man examine himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Verse 31, for if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. First John chapter four, verse 17. Love has been perfected in this. That we might have confidence or boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Verse 18. Perfect love casts out fear and the torment that goes with it. In the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus we pray I read those verses in first John because there should be no fear in the communion service because Jesus cast out fear and the torment that went with it out of your life and mine you may have never made Jesus Lord of your life. Now's the time to pray the prayer. Pray this prayer with me, no matter where you are in your Christian life or if you've never been saved. You'll be right with God and ready to receive the communion elements as soon as we're finished praying. Pray this with me. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name. I know I need you in every part of my life. I know I need you in every part of my life. According to the word of God. According to the word of God. Jesus is the door. Jesus is the door. And I enter in through him. And I enter in through him. Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I believe in you. And I receive you into my life right now. And I receive you into my life right now. And according to John chapter 1, and according to John chapter you one, give me the power, you give me the power to become a child of God. To become a child of God. And I thank you for it. And I thank you for it. Do this. Take your sins, put them in a big pile, and just say, There's my sin. There's all my sin. I have no ability to beat it. I have no ability to beat it. Put your hands out and say, I receive your righteousness. I receive your righteousness. Filling Jesus. every part of my life. Filling every part of my life. And I thank you for it. And I thank you for it. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. So I live in power. So I live in power. Understand the word of God. Understand the word of God. 
Pray in my heavenly language. Pray in my heavenly language. And live a successful life. And live a successful life. As a believer every day. As a believer every day. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And amen. And amen. If that's your first time praying that, I declare this to you. Welcome to the kingdom of God. If that's the 100th time you prayed it, welcome to the kingdom of God. This is the family of God. This is what we look like. What I love about that prayer we just prayed is you can actually experience it on the inside. Every time I say, Jesus, I receive you, I can, I can experience, I'm experiencing it on the inside of me. Every time I say, I receive your righteousness, fill in every part of my life, just like right there, as soon as I said it, you went in that prayer, you went from darkness to light. You went from fear to faith. You went from your sin, which you have no ability to defeat, to his righteousness, which he gives you when you receive him. You went from being a mere earthling to now being a child of almighty God on this earth. You know what? That makes you a representative of the kingdom of heaven. And Father said, making a minister of reconciliation. Just like that. You might say, Pastor, I don't even understand all that. It doesn't matter. All of it happened. No different than if today a billionaire left you a billion dollars. And everything you need to know about how to make that happen. But it's still yours. It's who you are. And now all you got to do is learn about how to take care of it. And that's what the kingdom of God is all about. That's what the spiritual life as a Christian is all about. And that's what this program is all about. That's what the community of is all about. We'll help you walk with God. They put my email address in there, my website. You can find everything you need to know about us there. Send me an email. Send me a messenger message. Don't put personal stuff on the Facebook page. We have other moderators that read that. We want to help you walk with God every day of your life. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. And just like that, we're ready to receive the communion elements. So get you some bread and water, bread and grape juice. I recommend you to everyone that although you may not have these elements, the first time we do it. Remember this about our God. He loves order. And this is the assignment that Jesus gave us. So next time you go to the store, get what you need. That way, it's all things are being done decent and in order. In Jesus' mighty name. Ready? Pray this with me. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name. I bless these elements. I bless these elements. And I call them sanctified. And I call them sanctified. For this time of communion with you. For this time of communion with you. Jesus, you were wounded. Jesus, you were wounded. For my transgression. For my transgression. You were bruised. You were bruised. For my iniquity. For my iniquity. The chastisement for my peace, the chastisement for my peace is upon you, Lord. Is on you, Lord. And by your stripes, and by your stripes, I am healed. I am healed. In my spirit, in my soul, and in my body. In my spirit, in my soul, and in my body. In my mind, my will, and my emotion. In my mind, my will, and my emotion. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Nothing Missing, nothing broken. Every joint supplying. Every joint supplying. In my body. In my body. From your body, Jesus. From your body, Jesus. In the body of Christ in my community. In the body of Christ in my community. And right here in this community of faith. And right here in this community of faith. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's receive the bread together.
Thank you, Jesus. But no one took your life. You willingly laid it down. On purpose. For us. And the moment you said it is finished. It was finished. It is finished. Let's pray over the, the, um, the, the blood of the new covenant. Say this with me. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I have been redeemed. I have been redeemed. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I have reconciliation. I have reconciliation. With you, my father. With you, my father. Thank you, sir. Thank you. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Every sin. Every sin. Has been placed in remission. Has been placed in remission. In my life. In my life. I am a new creation. I am a new creation. Old things have passed away. Old things have passed away. And all things have become new. And all things have become new. And I thank you for it. And I thank you for it. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Every plague. Every plague. No matter its name. No matter its name. Has to pass over. Pass and over. cannot be on me or my family. And cannot be on me or my family. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I come boldly. I come boldly. To the throne room of grace. To the throne room. Where I find grace, mercy, and help. Where I find grace, mercy, and help. For my assignment every day. For my assignment every day. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. And the word of my testimony. And the word of my testimony. I overcome. I overcome. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. The accuser of the brethren. The accuser of the brethren. Is cast down forever. Is cast down forever. And there's no more condemnation. And there's no more condemnation. My conscience is purged. My conscience is purged. My robes are made white. My robes are made white. And I will always be. And I will always be. The glorious church. The glorious church. Without spot, wrinkle, or any other blemish. Without spot, wrinkle, or any other blemish. When you come for me. When you come for me. And I thank you for it. And I thank Let's you receive Lord. the juice together. Hallelujah. 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 Let's sing our song about the blood. Let me get the crackers washed down. The blood that Jesus shed for me. Way back on Calvary, the blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power, it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its power it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. It will never lose 
it will never lose. It will never lose its power. Hallelujah. 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 Bless you, John. Love you, man. We still got goulash. She never came in eight. I love all you fine people in the community of faith. In Jesus' mighty name. Good night, family. I got not one second of sleep last night. I've got to cop some Z's. Well, guess what? Father, may she sleep all night and rest peacefully. We speak it over everyone that's here. In the mighty name of Jesus. As a matter of fact, I'm going to say that for my closing verses. Let's see how fast I can find it. My peaceful sleep verses. You ready? Uh, somebody titled this wrong. <laughs> Is an SM. Well, I've got a confession that talks all about sleeping. What is it? Um, and this is not, oh, all right, here's some of the verses. You ready? This is Psalm 16, 7 through 9. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night season. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. That's some sleep verses. Psalm uh, 127, 1 and 2. Unless the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It's vain for you to rise up early to sit up late unless you got Mike's job. <laughs> mm -hmm. He gives his beloved sleep. Proverbs 3, 24. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down and your sleep will be sweet. Psalm 23. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Surely goodness. And he restores my soul. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. Through the Lord's mercies, his compassions are certain. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And amen. Anybody got anything else they want to say? Truly an Envamala. God bless you all with good sleep and good rest. Sending you lots of log, logs and hugs. Catch up with you all tomorrow. We love you guys. Catch us some beautiful butterflies or just take pictures of them. God bless you, Julian Vamala, John Wayner, Velma, Wilma, Shannon, Mike, Rebecca, and Sister Mary Pastorick. There you go. You're amazing, Wilma. You are amazing.
amazing, Wilma. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Who else is with us we didn't see? Anna, Christine Barkley, right. bless you. Dan and Gwen, we bless you. Dave and Gwen, we bless you guys. Bless you, Mary. We love you. Thank you so much for this coffee cup, woman. It's not like I couldn't have bought one. On, uh, that's um, Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. Um, that's just a good verse to wake up with. Thank you, Wilma. Thank you for your diligence in this. It's amazing. But Mary, um, I could have bought one off of Amazon, but it don't mean as much as the one you sent me. Amen. This will be special to me yeah. all the days of my life. And I want you to see something. See how my kids' pictures on that cup? When the cup heats up, then I get to see their picture. So now that it's sitting there on the warmer, the picture stays on the whole time. Yeah, because it gets dark and you don't see the pictures as it gets cool. Andrew and Jesse and Josh and Josiah and old Max. Love my kids. There you go. Thank you, Wilma. My, my, my. I'm sure Shannon put a list. Did you put your list in, love? Mm -hmm. I didn't. I wasn't able to see the comments on YouTube. On YouTube or on Facebook, brother Mike went to sleep. Shannon went to sleep. Did somebody need the list reposted over there? Is that they didn't see what great teeth in the There it is. Live stream. I just don't see what's happening here. These notes. But anyways, enough about that. We'll figure that out when we say good night. Call you blessed. You love that cup? I love it too, man. That's a cool cup. That is a cool cup. Got a picture of my kids on it. I like that. And one grandkid. One of the three grand boys, grandsons. But um, the other one's from all of them. And, and, um, Three more days. My oldest grandson will be 11 years old. Wow. Not that old. <laughs> Till we see you again tomorrow for, for noon prayer. This is what we have to say. We love you. And God loves you. Jesus is Lord. And thank you for making this a wonderful place to worship. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.